Welcome, welcome to another 88.5 Live at home. And my name is Byron Gonzalez. Thank you for joining me. I am also the host of uh, a Latin alternative show on 88.5 FM called Bilingual Sounds. You can catch it every Wednesday at 9 p.m. And I am so honored and excited today to introduce to you an amazing artist. She just released a brand new, her debut EP called Ventura. And she's a Panamanian artist all the way right here, right next to me. Welcome, Sofia Valdez. <laughs> I was <laughs> um, Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, sorry about that. No, How are you? Okay. thank you for taking the time. How are you doing today? Uh, how's your good. day? I'm good. I, I went to sleep like around like four or 5 a.m. today because I was finishing a song and I woke up like an hour ago, like at two, it's like three now. So that's not good. That's definitely not good. I have a lot of stuff to finish today, but um, yeah, I'm all good. How are you? That's good to hear. I'm, I'm doing well. It's a little cold today in Los Angeles, um, but that's why I got this uh, sweater on. I have like, I know people say that LA is like hot, but the few times that I've been there, like I've been there like twice in my life and like for a really short amount of times and it's been really cold like yeah. I didn't well sorry I know it's kind of stupid to say I just like I have no idea that it gets cold in LA no it so. does it does when you're used to the hot weather all the time when it yeah. gets a little bit cold you get cold <laughs> like right now it's probably like 60. Like, I'm like in the 90s you know like so anything that's like a little like windy is like really cold yeah I'm very sensitive to it <laughs> um and, and so where, where are you connecting from are you in, in Panama right now yeah I'm home I'm with my family right now I'm kind of scared my mom's gonna walk in any second now but uh yeah I'm home and all good yeah awesome. that's good uh yeah I, I was reading that you had to go home during the pandemic and yes. uh, I'm glad you're able to stay with family because sometimes being on your own is very very difficult during pandemic yeah yeah and I mean I guess I'm I'm like I'm I just turned 21 like two weeks ago so um I think like I, I can be like staying with my parents you know and it wouldn't be weird actually it would not be weird overall because it's a pandemic but um it's actually the smartest thing to do right now yeah I don't know how people like have been able to like stay by themselves I, I know a few um but you know, like everyone has such a different like home situation that some people like cannot be with their families in the same place, you know? Yeah, um, different, different strokes for different, a lot of different people. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, but uh, let's talk about uh, your music a little bit. You just released your, your new debut EP, which is wonderful by the way. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of us are, are still trying to get to know you a little bit. You're, you're brand new to the scene. You released your first single in 2020. And now you have your debut EP, but I, I want to know a little bit about you. Um, how did you get started with music? I know you started very, very young, but playing the guitar. But before that, what what led you to have this connection with music? Um, I think it was like my mom was like, "You should take guitar classes," and I did. And I think I fell in love with the like crafting songs and it would take me a long time to like finish a song but it was so much fun because it was kind of like a puzzle you know and you were trying to like tell a story but like make it poetic and like um putting mel it's just like a, such a beautiful process and i think and yeah i fell in love with that and um i know that your your great grandparents were both musicians i had a pretty lovely morning checking out your grandparents music uh, Miguelito Valdez and uh, Sofia, I think, right? Uh, no. Silvia. Uh, Silvia, Silvia de Grace. And um, did you ever find inspiration from them and their music? Or did you find out up that they were musicians later in life? I mean, I've always known I've had like family that did music, um, but I had no idea that like, I didn't know they would like be writing songs and stuff. I remember when I started like writing, I thought I was like super like original and whatever. And then I found out that like my dad and my grandparents and my dad's siblings and like, 
you know, everyone's been writing songs forever. I just like didn't know. Wow, so it's it's already in your blood and you it just kind of naturally went to you. I find it so weird because I've never seen myself like part of this like musical like family, you know, but like now with like interviews and like talking about it, I've like realized that like yeah, like it, it definitely has been like a musical upbringing. That's so funny. So interviews are kind of like therapy for you. <laughs> There's so funny because in some interviews, sometimes like I talk to people and then like, and they something say, say, say something extremely personal about me. And I'm like, how do they know that? And then I realize like in interviews, because I'm home, I feel like I don't, I don't understand that's like being recorded and like being put out, you know, and I'm being like, so vulnerable, you know, and <laughs> so well, funny i think fans really like to see that part of an artist you know because it makes us relate to you and as a person and i think for me at least your music uh, tr like transpires beyond just lyrics to a song it ends up being more personal for us thank you that means a lot yeah and and i really enjoy your music um you you kind of play on a lot of um write about love and but it's not really obvious, you know? Is that something you strive for? Yes, for sure. <laughs> I think I, I don't like to be very direct on my songs because there's something about like writing in a way that is so personal that a lot of people wouldn't get it. But like, I feel people can feel it, you know, if that makes sense. Like, um, I, mean, I felt it, I, I, I could see that it was about love, but it's not like, Hey, I'm in love and I love this person. No, it's it's very uh metaphorical. Yeah, I think I, I really try to be like that with my songs. Um, but yes, like sometimes I will like put in like like let's say like inside jokes I had with the person and that's like a word, but like people are like, Why did she just said that or like a weird phrase or um yeah, I just try to be as like personal as possible and really try to like dig in myself to see like what like I'm I'm sure there's like more to the story that what happened to me so like I'm trying to like find you know more like what's the word like palpable <laughs> I think <so. laughs> like more like things I don't know how to explain it more, yeah uh, outside of your own self and and yeah try to not be too obvious yeah and it's like, <laughs> a very like um i like i like things that like bring pictures to your head it does I, and, and oceans away did that for me <laughs> oh thank you that's so cool um and now i want to talk a little bit of, uh, more about your musical journey you had why a journey um you left your home to go to michigan to go to school and then went to London and then you finally got a record deal and had to fly to Los Angeles and now you're back in Panama. Did you, did, was this something you always strive for, for, for like this much attention and, and all the interviews that you're having now and releasing your debut EP? Um, I definitely strive for like music being out and like, I, like my dream is just making really, really good, like something I'm really proud of, you know? The attention part, I still don't even like I don't even know if it's happening you know because I'm like in my house and I just get messages on my Instagram so I don't really like you know know what's happening that much but um yeah I think the dream has always been just a music part um and now there's like a lot of stuff like happening which is really cool because it means people are listening so um I feel very grateful for that yeah, and congratulations. You have a beautiful set. And we've been playing here at the station, A uh, Handful of Water. And personally, I've been playing Oceans Away. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. I like, cannot believe. Because, again, I'm in Panama. And then, like, just, like, my song being played, like, in another country. Like, that's just so weird and so wild. Yeah, in cities across the, the United States. And I'm sure also... Uh, South America and Central America. Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, it's just so weird. Like, there was someone 
like a friend of mine that is in Spain and Barcelona, um, she went to Madrid for like a little bit. And while being there, she like, she was in a taxi or like an Uber, I don't know, or a friend's car, I don't know. And they were playing one of my songs. Oh, and wow. What the hell? It's <laughs> surreal. It was just so weird. Yeah. And like, I'm just, I just feel very happy about it, you know? That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Your music should be played everywhere. And talking about music, can we listen to a song? I know you have your guitar ready. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, so I guess since we said Handful of Water, we were talking about that. That's the first one we're going to do. Lately, I've been distracting myself. Lock my door, but it don't really help. Tried so hard, but no que resiste, persiste. Cannot feel it. No matter what I do, intentions slip into a handful of water. I can hold on to So I'm looking around Spit feelings on the ground A handful of water A handful of water A handful of water What's my problem With getting closer Found myself in mixed emotions Roller coasters don't know how I found myself relying on this Don't lie to me No matter what I do Intention slip into a handful of water That I can't hold on to So I'm walking around Spin feelings on the ground A handful of water Thank you for playing that too. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the process of your EP. Uh, I was reading that when the pandemic hit, you haven't even started recording the album and you had to figure out a way to do it. So all this, all this back and forth, using the internet, sending files, returning files, was that a, a grueling? I'm still making music like that. Um, it was so tough to be honest like the songs were all written by the time I was signed like the EP was done you know like lyrically and melodically and everything mm. guitar and whatever I had like the demos um and then like I got signed during the pandemic so like after that it was like okay I start working so why yeah we got in touch with them some like producers and some that were interested and we started working with them and it, it was, it's hard you know because like especially like well especially for me I'm like so the only reason I'm doing this entire thing is because of the music part and like I want to be there with the producer and like you know you want to create a world and it was really difficult because I couldn't we couldn't do that um but I'm very proud of like what came out either way because you know, we, we were able to like work, even if like the situations were bad, you know? Yeah, and I think it kind of speaks to your artistry. Like artists, I feel they always challenge themselves one way or another, uh, whether yeah. you want to or not. And the pandemic was definitely a, a challenge to your artistic intake and your artistic yeah. creative process. Yeah. Do you, do you feel that um, because of this, 
your songs turned out differently? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy with how they turn out. But I know, like, in a world where no COVID, I think it would have been different. But I'm very happy with how they turned out, you know? Yeah, yeah. We have like music videos and all that but like you know like the music videos that i had that were like recorded with like this little camera and i was just like figuring it out you know what i mean like all of them and most of them were like edited by me too you know oh really see it's all diy you have to, you have no, to it's, in your face. So i don't think people understand how diy this project was like it's so funny then estás poniendo más de, de tu corazón en el proyecto mm -hmm. You're putting more of your heart into it Pretty much, yeah. Um, and so, you know, I want to talk a little bit also about this um, bilingual identity that both of us hold. We, we know English and Spanish. And you put in a little bit of Spanish into the, the Handful of Water song, into the album. Um, do you wish or do you hope to put in a little bit more of that later on in your future music? Definitely. It just has to be done right, you know? Like... I think I've heard sometimes when people like try to do that and I'm like, I don't stop it. But then some people like, like Telepatia by Caliuch is like, she did such a good job at like combining both. Um, and that entire album is like amazing and what she was able to do, that's great. Um, and it's funny with the, because I'm full of water, like I, I, I didn't go into the session being like, yeah, I'm gonna put a lyric in Spanish or anything, I was, I told, I was like, I need to find a way to say this, because my mom's always said to me, lo que resiste, persiste, always. Oh, wow. Um, and then when I was, we were, I was like, my mom always says, says that, and I kind of want to put it in the song, but like, it's in Spanish. And the guy that was with me, the producer, Johnny Latimer, he was like, um, just say it. And then we would rhyme it, and I was like, okay. And then we said it and it fit in well. Yeah, it was perfect. I of that because I was like, what if people are going to be like, I just speak in Spanish. But like, everyone's like reacted to it very well, so. I'm telling yeah. you, it's this, it's this dual identity that many Latinos in the United States hold, you know? We speak yeah. both languages. And I know, uh, I was also reading that um, you were having kind of trouble with um, staying true to that identity. Um, is that still true today? Or are you a little bit more not so shy to speak in, in Spanish? Um, no, I've, I've never been shy about speaking in Spanish. I think um, when I'm like in the US for a while, it's hard for me to speak Spanish. When I'm in Panama, it's hard for me to speak English. Like, you know, it's like, depends on where I am. Like it gets like the language. I think when I was younger, I, I felt like I, I struggled with my identity being a Latina woman, you know? I think it was, I felt like I thought I was like one of the other people, you know, like I thought I was like, there was nothing different, you know? And I remember going to the US and, and people kept like putting, like, it was, I don't know how to explain it. Like, and I realized I was like, whoa, oh, I get like, I'm different to these people. Yeah. And for a while, for a bit, I was very embarrassed to tell people where I was from. And I was very embarrassed to speak Spanish. And I dyed my hair blonde and I would, wouldn't want to like stand in the sun because I was scared that the moment I was going to get like super tan. And then like when I would like come back from Panama, like to school, people are going to be people were like she got she got spray tan. I was like, I was, you know what I mean? And it was like this like constant thing I was like terrified of and then with time I was like what the fuck you know what I mean yeah totally I I feel like like I've, I've never been more proud of being a Panamanian you know what I mean like a Latina and I think it took time maybe because I was so young I didn't understand it then and I wanted to fit in so badly, um, but you know, I'm so proud of my culture and my family and 
um, all my family are from like different parts of Latin America, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Mexico, Panama, Venezuela, Colombia. Wow. Um, yeah, this is, my family is a mess. Everyone's from different places and have like lived in Santa Lucia as well. Like it's, it's I very, was... everyone is, you know, but we're all from here. Yeah. Um, and I think now that I'm, what I'm saying, now that I'm older, like with my music, I feel like, you know, it can be such an, I wanted to do just music in English. And then I realized how people here in Panama were reacting to that. And everyone was so happy. Um, but a few people were like, oh, but I can't speak English that well or whatever. And you know it would be so cool if i can get to that point where i want to get and i can sing in my language as well you know what i mean yeah and i think it would be so powerful for like young girls from here you know from latin america and and you know i think through all of it being proud of where we're from you know yeah and i think uh, music that does have lyrics uh, in Spanish and English does help younger people um, because when I was growing up out here in the United States, there was no music in Spanish, or at least not rancheras or cumbias and, and, and very pop stuff. Um, and also, when I was in middle school, I kept get putting into ESL classes, even though I per I spoke English. It was really weird, so it made me feel the same as you, very different. You off. You feel like you don't fit in. Like you're not that smart. Like you're not. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah, and it's really sad, but at the same time, that's what makes us like special. Like, yeah, like we have this beautiful community that, like, you know, like I don't, I mean, I'm sure there's other cultures that are very like inclusive and like, you know, they want to like stick together, but like I know like Latin people are like, li like I will meet a uh, a girl from Costa Rica in the US and she will become my best friend, like in yeah, a second. Totally. Right. Like, um, network. Yeah, and you know, there's something very beautiful about that. And yeah, there's such a and there's such a massive community of Latin people in the US, you know. So so has that reflected in your um, songwriting now? I'm sure during the pandemic oh, being stuck at that, home. That like yeah, I, I didn't realize how much it like impacted me until like not like this year um like i said like seeing people reacting here from panama like how much it meant for them that i was doing what i'm doing i felt like if i even if i did it in spanish it would just like even be you know more inspiring for other people i get messages from girls and like when i go on their instagram they're like 16 or 14 you know like because of you i've started singing again and i'm going to art school and i'm applying and there's this other girl she like wanted to be a painter and her parents she was like scared of telling her parents and i know maybe for like people in the u.s are like what like the people are like why why is that a big deal but here like in latin america or like at least in central america panama um to go for the arts is something very look down on how do you say that like yeah, you look down uh, yeah it's just like not you know there's no like um they're like are you sure you don't want to do like a doctor you don't want to be yeah. like I apoyo. Uh, apoyo in english huh apoyo. oh uh support there's no there's support for no the arts and like like you know in well as much as in other places like but for example, like in Colombia, there is a lot of more support in the arts, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm, I think in Mexico as well, but I'm, I'm sure that like, we've all lived a version of, you know, people being like, are you sure you're doing that? Like, you're gonna be able to do, you're not gonna have a house, you're not gonna, you know? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, have the opportunity to have this like space and inspire other people because like I, I didn't even come 
like this wasn't even part of the dream you know what I mean but now it's like been such an inspiring thing you know yes of course um can we hear another song right now yes which one would you like Ooh. oceans away because that one's beautiful soon but i still have a few more questions these are a little more relaxed and a little bit more to get to know you as a person so okay. first one um are you more of a coffee person or a tea person coffee. i mean i know i should do tea but i'm like i have a problem with caffeine like i cannot have sorry i know these questions should be quick but like no, no, that's i like that like tea i like but and i love tea but I'm a, like I I love coffee, but I know I can't have it because it really, it it I I go crazy. Like people know that they will. But sometimes they're like, if you're gonna drink coffee, I don't want to be around you. Which is like, um, you know. Yeah, you're like talk to me before uh, after I have my coffee first. You're one of those people. No, because if I talk to them after I have my coffee, I'm like too much for everyone. I'm like. Oh, everyone, oh. like <laughs> I don't want to be around. That's fine. I drink coffee. I have to drink coffee first, and then I'm like, oh, chill. I can to concentrate on work. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question: What is your favorite food? Um, I would have to say, oh, there's one soup I've had, and it's like in 
It's like a restaurant in Liverpool called Pho. And it's like Vietnamese like soup. It's so good. It's like, um, it's called ugh, something, it's not. It's like, there's one called Spicy Green. That's the one my boyfriend likes. And then this one I like this like, super green. I like super green. There's like a bunch of vegetables in the soup. So good. Yeah, that pho is so great. Out here in Los Angeles, there's pho places everywhere. I can't believe it. But, and I had it in LA when I went, but it was not the same as this one restaurant. They make it so well. I do not know what they do, but like, it's <laughs> That's funny. Uh, next question. Um, what was one of your favorite albums to listen to when you were growing up that you just couldn't stop listening to? Um, when I was like younger, I remember when um, Pure Heron came out by Lord. And that was the first album or one of the first albums I like really got obsessed with. Ah, that's a good one. She's great. She's so sweet. We don't deserve Lord. <laughs> we don't deserve her. That's so funny. Um, what is one of your favorite movies? Silver Linings Playbook. Oh, yeah. I would say that's my favorite, absolute favorite movie. When I was younger, I printed, um, I found, I don't know how, I found the script online and I printed it. And I would like watch the movie, like reading it. And I was like, I figured it out. And I was like 13, 14. And I would watch it every single day. At every single day after school, I would come home and, and, watch the movie wow. I was like, that's a lot of watching of the movie <laughs> no, I, I'm not exaggerating that's the worst part like I wish <laughs> I could. and so when you've had a bad day you put that on now I haven't watched it in a while no. but I kind of want to forget it I have like the memory of a hamster like I'll forget everything like in a second so I'm trying <laughs> to forget about it and then watch it again as if it was like a new movie because yeah, like, it's just like I need to have it again, but like that feeling of that first time I watched it, you know? Yeah. I know it's going to do the same because when I was like 13, it like, it, like I, I connected with the movie so much. Like, yeah, I hope I can do that again. Uh, yeah, well, you said you have a, a pretty short memory, so you can experience it all over again. It's like 51st yeah. dates. <laughs> you get to watch it. That's like, like Harry Potter. I watched, like, I was super, like, into it when I was, like, 14, and then, like, I think at the beginning of quarantine, I was able to watch all the movies as it was the first time. It was great. Same with, like, the Huffington and stuff. <laughs> I, awesome. I'm, like, obsessed with Jennifer Lawrence. I've been obsessed with her since I was, like, a baby. Oh, wow. So, and I'll watch it, and I'll be obsessed with it. So, well, I, I hope if you, when you come back to Los Angeles, you get to meet her somewhere at a restaurant or something. I don't know if I would want that to be honest like in my head she's this like person and or, i know woman, you know she so what if she's like and she just like is not in the mood like i think i'll be like ruined for a long time like i don't think i can do myself i mean okay. I, I know some people that's like met her and they all said that she's like the sweetest but and really smart but i don't you know I don't know if I would want to meet my idols, you know. Well, hopefully she adds you to her to her playlist or something. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god! If not, if like Jennifer Lawrence listen to that music, Jennifer, if you're watching eighty eight five, listen to Sofia Valdez. If she were to listen to my music or just like hear my or just like hear one time one of my songs, I would then feel like I've made it. Like, I can retire after that. That's funny. No, don't retire. Don't retire. We need more music from you. <laughs> that, would be, that would be like, that would be, I'll, I'll be happy. I'll be like satisfied with whatever. Like, that's, I'm happy. That's it. Uh, last question. Uh, can you tell us something about Panama that maybe most people don't know? Or maybe your favorite thing about it? Um, I think it's something really cool. But my sister just, um, there's this volcano here. It's called Volcan Baru. And my sister just hiked it. And this is like really long like hike and it's really difficult. And it's like really cold and then really hot. And it's just like, but when you get to the top, 
of it and everyone's like super tired <laughs> you get you feel like you're like in heaven and you're like above the clouds and on one side you can see the atlantic ocean and the other you can see the pacific it's panama and like you can just do that and i think it's pacific, pacific ocean. you know what I mean? you can like see it and i think that's really cool wow that's amazing i gotta look it up if you can do that you can look at both the oceans it's panama wow. so you can see both ways but you can only see it from a really high point and that's the only high point you can see it oh my god what was it called again volcan baru baru i remember baru. that i remember over there yeah, Every, yeah. Anyone, i should do that but i'm not i'm like not like i'm like very like everyone in my house makes fun of me i'm like a spaghetti <laughs> i'll be like you know i'm not like strong um i mean i went on a hike with my boyfriend it wasn't even a hike we were just going it was like up a hill and it was so difficult for me <laughs> so bad and like a little hike also we went on a little hike with like her parents his dad just like 63 and his, his mom is like she's 50 and they were like up in the hill by the time i was like trying to but also they're like in such good conditions but yeah i i really want to do that hike that i was saying to, to the volcano but my mom was like i wouldn't let you do it because you're i would be scared you will fall because i'm also so clumsy that it just it would be a possibility you know that's dangerous for you <laughs> don't do it i would have to like work out and like be strong but like i'm not the strongest like you know what i mean <laughs> i just play guitar yeah okay. yeah that's that's light enough for you yeah <laughs> Well, Sophia, that's that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for taking the time and, and playing your wonderful tunes. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What's uh what's left in your day for today? More interviews or are you just gonna check? In like an hour and it's till 10 p.m. It's like six to seven hours now writing. That's wow. The life. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. We gotta love it. I don't like it, but you know, that's the job. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's your path. You chose it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.
It's been dragging us to the water to face the fact that I'm leaving on Sunday at 2 p.m. And I will never see you laughing FM, KCSN, and KCSN HD1, Northridge, Los Angeles. KSBR and KSBR HD1, Mission Viejo. A service of California State University, Northridge, and Saddleback College. Member-supported public radio. Streaming on the web at 885fm.org.